In a scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird religious rite, five persons, including actress Sharon Tate, were found dead at the home of Miss Tate and her husband, screen director Roman Polyansky. More than 80 people are believed to have died in yesterday's fiery conclusion to the 51-day siege, 24 of them children. The leader is on the top cult structure and he makes the decisions. They believe they are special and claim to have a special mission in life or know something no one else knows. They demand absolute loyalty from followers, they overvalue themselves and devalue those around them, they don't accept criticism and they don't like being questioned or challenged. People are vulnerable to manipulation when they are in a state of distress or depression, are experiencing hard times, or are going through major transition phases in their lives. For example, college students that are far away from home, people who lost a loved one, broke up, lost a job, or just feeling lonely and lost. Imagine someone in that psychological state and suddenly, a stranger starts a conversation and just invites him or her in a meeting. It might be a gathering where they discuss religion, it might be a self-help seminar, practicing yoga, martial arts, etc. Different cults have different ways to lure people in. When this person goes to the meeting, he or she experiences love bombing. Everyone is behaving nicely and it seems a positive community of like-minded people. The leader speaks what they have in mind, and there's a special connection with him. Don't you feel connected to someone, even a stranger, that seems to think just like you? Or what's even more powerful, speaks what you're too scared to speak? Cult leaders have so much influence over their followers, far beyond ordinary logic or self-interest. Why does it happen? As we said, people unknowingly take part in cult activities and find themselves contributing more and more to the group. Eventually, their identity is going to be linked to the group. You might try to reason with them, but it won't work. You must have noticed when some people refuse to believe that their preferred political candidate is wrong about a certain issue. For example, a journalist could make Trump supporters contradict themselves with a couple of logical questions. I'm not saying that those who support Trump blindly are not smart, but their identity is linked to the group, and going against it, it's like going against himself. Immersed in a crowd that seems to have a dynamic of its own, the followers are completely devoted to their leader and are prepared to do anything he commands, even kill someone or hurt themselves. These individuals give up their will even though they believe to be acting spontaneously. Now let's see it from the perspective of the leader. Gustave Le Bon, also known as the father of crowd psychology, argued that the leader is obsessed with his vision to such a degree that everything outside it vanishes and that every contrary opinion appears to him an error or a superstition. This obsession helps him gain the necessary confidence to persuade the masses. He must always appeal to the emotional brain, he must exaggerate, affirm, resort to repetition, and never attempt to prove anything by reasoning. Also, the leader first has to create the message in a way that reflects and embodies the irrational sentiments of the crowd. In 1961, psychologist Robert J. Lifton studied brainwashing in communist China. In his book, Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism, he offered eight criteria for mind control. After the book was published, people who were in cults confirmed that similar strategies were used on them. Milieu Control The leader and the inner circle have complete control over the information and the followers learn to trust only news that comes from the group. Eventually, they will resist legitimate information that is against the group. Mystical Manipulation The leader orchestrates specific patterns of behavior in a way that looks spontaneous or even supernatural. 
For example, the leader seems to know a lot about the new member, but in fact he learned that information from someone else. And the new member might believe that the leader is special and there are mystical forces at work. Division of the world in pure good and pure evil. They assume that absolute purity is attainable, and anything done to achieve this goal is moral. In practice, it's impossible to achieve this perfection. So, by setting extremely high standards, the followers will feel guilt and shame when they won't achieve them. Confession Every act or feeling that is not according to the group rules should be shared or confessed. If someone is kept confessing, you have control over his shame and guilt mechanisms. Sacred Science Group ideology is considered being absolutely and scientifically true. There is no room for questions or a different point of view. Loading the language Members learn new words that are easily memorized and easily expressed, otherwise known as the language of non-thought. Since a language is essential to human experience, when you describe other ideas with cliches, you dramatically lower their capacity for thinking and feeling. Doctrine of a person If a follower doubts the beliefs of the leader, they make him feel that there's something wrong with him. He thinks the wrong way because of his shortcomings. He has to embrace the doctrine rather than his discoveries. Dispensing of existence It is the most dangerous cult behavior. Destructive cults think only their group members have the right to exist and other people don't. Today some leaders differ a lot from others. They don't spark ideas, but controversy. They don't encourage cooperation, but division. They don't instill hope in people's hearts, but fear. During the campaigns they give an exciting show, tap into people's emotions, give big promises, and people elect them. But running a country is an enormous responsibility, not everyone is able to lead. The time for words is over, now you need to deliver. When you become a prime minister or president, it's not about you anymore. Now you represent an entire nation. The problem is that they are extreme narcissists. They see themselves as larger than life. Only their belief or opinion is correct. With this point of view, they will fail. When things go sideways, he won't be able to fix the problem because he's not prepared. He's not built for that role. So they will do what they do best, propaganda. Of course, the price for their mistakes is paid by the poor and middle class. I hope that understanding the mind control techniques might help you or someone else see beyond the facade. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible.